Mr. Pasco, let me first of all recognize the presence of my cabinet colleagues and also the member of parliament for Grand Four, Mr. Honorable Abraham Brown, the chairman of the Mount John River Civic Village Council and other councillors and I believe I saw the principal of the primary school here. And of course, very importantly, the residents of the Grand Fork constituency, and in particular, the residents of Mont John, where this meeting is being held tonight. My dear friends, this session this evening is in keeping with our state of commitment to remain connected and accountable to the people of Dominica. Irrespective of the political temperature of the island, as far as I know, there is no general elections on the immediate horizon, but yet the Dominican Lower Party is in, in Monjon tonight to update you on the going, goings on of the government and more specifically this constituency. I am inspired by your show of continued support for the Labour government and I appreciate your expression of gratitude for all we have done and are trying to do under very trying economic circumstances. Ladies and gentlemen, to appreciate all that we have done as a government in the last four years, you need to reflect on the experiences of small island states in the past two years in particular when the entire world was gripped by the worst economic depression since the 1930s. Mightier nations than Dominica have fallen victim to the economic downturn. Yet, when you scroll through the pages of our country's or party's manifesto, and when you reflect on the goals and priorities we set ourselves as a party in government, you would appreciate that more than 90% of what we said we would do has been accomplished and has been accomplished and it has been accomplished ladies and gentlemen with minimum strain on you the taxpayers of Dominica. Now let me tell you and if you listen to news every day to appreciate the serious crisis which the world is now confronting you would have seen last night and this morning on the television that in the United States of America and in more particularly the state of Georgia the authorities there took a decision to reduce the school week from five days to four days because the government cannot afford to keep students in school five days a week and this is a stark reality which you're confronted with in the world but here in Dominica here in Dominica our students are going to school and will go to school the entire five days of the school week. Because oftentimes, when we want to say what is not happening in Dominica, we always make reference to America. Now, if we always do so well, when things are bad, we must say that things are bad in America and things are good in Dominica. I can tell you that we in Dominica are faring much better than many nations across the world. And in large measure, in large measure, it has to do with the prudent and responsible management of the fiscal situation in Dominica and the sound fiscal policies of this administration over the last several years. And my, my friends in Montjean here in Grand Four, far from increasing taxes in the past four years, we have systematically reduced personal income tax and other direct impositions on your take-home salaries. Indeed, we have created a framework where you are guaranteed an on-time salary. When last has anybody complained that they received a salary late from government? No, sir. As a matter of fact, my friends, when we pay, sometimes public officers are surprised that they've gotten their pay so long before the month ends. And I can tell you 
if you to call some of your friends and relatives in other islands within the Caribbean, they will not have the same answer for you today because they themselves are experiencing serious difficulties in meeting the payment of the salaries and tax. And sometimes you hear people say that we have too much taxes in Dominica. I was just doing some maths there earlier tonight and calculating and to see how many public officers pay taxes in Dominica. And I can tell you that the majority of public officers in Dominica either do not pay income tax or those who pay, pay less than $20 a month as income tax because of the progressive decisions to reduce income tax here in Dominica. So, someone who earns a salary, a yearly salary of two, or $22,280 a year only pays tax on the, on the $2,280. Because the first $20,000 is totally tax-free. And a number of people fall within that bracket here in Dominic. And Vince, when you work it out, what's that, $5? Huh? $36 a year, a month of taxes, income tax. And my friends, while others have criticized and undermined the policies of this government, my ministers and I have stuck to the task and we've delivered for the people of Dominica under very difficult circumstances. We have not been perfect. We have made errors along the way. But by and large, we have kept our promises to the people of Dominica and we have delivered. Because you hear in this constituency, and sometimes when people talk about nothing is happening and nothing has happened, so we forget about what has happened, and we always look for what is, what should be done next. But you must recall here in Monjon that you, as a mother, a, a housewife, you as a farmer, who is the only income earner in the home. Every month, before the government introduced the bus fare program, you had to get a hundred dollars per child to go to school in Castle Bruce. And you can understand, and you can understand that if you have three children in the home attending secondary school, you need to find three hundred dollars every month. And tell me who in Grandfather could, could afford this? Three hundred dollars every month to pay for the children every month. We have taken the burden off the parents here in Grand Form. You recall, you recall, my friends. And when I when I say Grand Form, I'm speaking about the Grand Form constituency under which you fall in. I, I know, you know, Mon John, Grand Form, River Siric, um, Freyhal, Platt, and all these places and so on. And I'm speaking about Platt later on and Freyhal later on. And you wonder how I know all these places in Grand Fall and Monday the Rest okay? I'll tell you later. <laughs> My Minister of Health, John Fabian, spoke to you about the tremendous progress in the health sector, for example. Where the government has taken deliberate decisions to seek to improve the delivery and the number of services that we offer to the Dominican citizens. The minister told you, and you see, oftentimes we forget these things, you know. The minister told you tonight that before 2005, Dominica never had an intensive care unit in Dominica. And one can appreciate, my friends, the number of Dominicans who may have died because they do not have, we do not have an intensive care unit to save the lives of Dominican people. And when I look at the statistics, I mean, number of Dominicans who have utilized the services of the intensive care unit and whose lives have been saved, I can tell you we have made tremendous progress in Dominica. We must all be proud of ourselves here in Dominica.